What's happening, guys? Hope everyone's well. Um, just finished my run, which is uh, my last run in my training phase for the 100k in 10 days, which is going to start on Thursday. So, why am I doing it? Look, if you know me well enough, you know that I don't particularly like running, especially not as a sport or even just as exercise or training, anything like that. The first time I did anything official when it came to running was the Marrakesh Marathon in January last year. Um, great experience. I got very sore. I trained quite hard for that as well over the space of like two months or something. I did a bit of a training block and um, my ankle got injured a couple of weeks to go, which really messed up my training, but, but we got it done. You know, the time wasn't the best. We did it like two hours, 24 or something like that, but we got it done on the two and a half hours, which is great. After that, I hung up my tra my uh, running shoes. I was like, I'm not running ever again. It's like, that's just painful stuff, man. But Ramadan came around and I was like, yo, there's a, there's a 10K in Ramadan that I can do. You know what, let's do it. <laughs> I did it for water. Um, I trained just a few weeks for that. Um, but I still managed to do it under an hour, which was amazing. I think I just I still had some um training remnants left in me from the Marrakesh Marathon then I hung up my shoes again and then after like nine months eight no ten months even once lockdown happened I was like your gyms are closed I can't even go swimming I can't go football or anything I've got to do something for my fitness and I need to get out of the house every now and again as well so I took up running again and that was probably the most fit I've been in terms of running like I trained for three months you know I did the 10k in Ramadan again I'd got an even better time, it was at like 57 minutes something, and that was amazing. Then I went on to increase that challenge to 100 kilometers in Ramadan, which was, that was hard, man, back-to-back -back runs. And then even carried on running after that as well, because gyms were still closed, swimming baths weren't open, I couldn't go footballs, which is like my main three things that I do, that I like to do anyway for my fitness. So then I was like, yo, let's just carry on running for a bit. And then what happened was this, is I saw, you know, YouTube recommendations, they're bad for you, man. Yo, let me take this off, man. I'm looking like an official runner over here, man. They're bad for you. Because what happened was, um, I was, <laughs> I think it was at night time or something. You go check. It might be night time. But then I seen a video of a 800 meter race with eight year olds. I was like, yo, let me, do let me look at this. Let me see how fast these kids can go. I, in my head, I'm thinking like, yo, if these kids go faster than me, I quit running. So then I just had a look at the video and I worked out that the fastest kid, oh, what was it? I think he did it in like two and a half minutes. Basically, if I extrapolated that to my 2K, what was his time? I think, wait, if it's 800 meters, two and a half minutes, times that by two, five minutes yeah so my best 2k by that point and i literally just just did a 2k um, recently from watching that video it was like um uh, it was like nine minutes 45 or something nine minutes 50 which is really slow i know but like this, these eight-year-old kids are doing could probably do 2k in the space of like less than eight minutes and that at that point i was just like nah salam alaikum iqbal salam alaikum faizan thanks for tuning in when I saw that, I was like, "Look, I'm a grown, I'm a grown man, and I can't even. This isn't happening, man. These kids are going faster than me. Like way, like way fast. If it was like a few seconds faster, then fine. But it was way faster. And I was like, nah. In July, I stopped running, and I was like, nah, forget, forget that, man. So then I had like a two about two months. I was depressed during July and August, and I was like, ah, yo, these kids, man." Like, like, that really put a downer on me. So then I was just like, yeah, Alhamdulillah, bro, it's great to hear, mashallah. And Faisan has a speech impediment. It's got an amazing story. Um, go check out his page to find out how he overcame it, mashallah. He's an inspiration to many people that have a stammer. Um, so, so yeah, man. But then October came and I was like, yo, we, we're not really spoiled for choices when it comes to challenges because of lockdown and everything. So then I was like, you know what, let's just... Uh, Let's get this going. Um, because I saw like one or two other charities doing it as well, and it was quite successful for them. So I was like, you know what, I've got a few people that like to run as well. So let's just put a word out. And alhamdulillah, like a good eleven people are doing the challenge, whether it's for ten days, twenty days, or thirty days. Um, a couple of us are taking on the ten days, um, then half of us are like twenty days and 
Um, we've got Sadiq, um, who actually finished it in 15 days. Originally, he's planned for 20 days for him. And mashallah, he's raised like three grand for it as well. And yeah, it just brings me on to the cause as well. It's like, um, we're doing it for Lebanon. And the thing is, is like, all of us, all of us, um, you know, we saw the blast happen in August. And it, it literally, like, it's just seeing the blast, it shook the world. Like, it's, it's ridiculous, like, the... The, the the impact it had on all the surrounding area, how it visually looked as well. It looked like something from one of my favorite animes. You know, it really was shocking to see that's happening in real life, and the amount of people that have been affected. And it really was a huge crisis. But then all of a sudden, a few days later, everyone seems to have forgotten about it. But you know, we went to Lebanon. You know, our our team programs team, they did need assessments in a couple of different areas, and it just came to find like they don't need they don't necessarily need food and water because a lot of charities are already covering that aspect. But rather, you know. And the more expensive part, which is harder to fix, is um, the windows and the doors and um, the structure of the houses and the roofs. And they really are lack lacking the security in the homes. So that's why, you know, um, I've decided to do this run specifically for the Beirut Blast and also all the other guys as well. And my own page is on Alhamdulillah since yesterday, about 11, 1200 pounds. And um, between my volunteers, last I checked, it was about five and a half grand. So Alhamdulillah is going to help. Um, a number of families, you know, when it comes to rebuilding their homes. So, yeah, man. So, I appreciate everyone that's supporting so far. You know, the chance have even started yet. Yeah, going to start on Thursday. But, alhamdulillah, we've already got so many people that that have um, that have been supporting the cause. You know, you guys always come through. And I genuinely appreciate all you guys for that, you know. And let's be real, I'm doing the specific donations, nothing else. You know, I don't, I don't enjoy running or anything like that. You know... It really is just, you know, it's just it's just because of charity that I bother to get my shoes and go out, whether it's wet, windy, cold or whatever it is, just to go do the run. So, um, how have I been training? So, you know what, let me just show you my log. You know, I nicked my sister's iPad just to do this because obviously I'm using my phone right now, I can't show it. And my other sister nicked the printer so I can't print anything out. But it's probably going to be inverted because of the thing. But if you guys just look, you know, towards the beginning of the month, I didn't start training until... You know what, that's fine. I can be dark, it's fine, as long as you get the iPad. I didn't start training until the 3rd of October. Um, I was just going gym a couple of times a week before that, football once a week, because lockdown being, being eased. But um, you can see that I did a 10K on the Saturday the 3rd, so that's literally when I started. I think today is the 17th. So, yeah, it's been literally two weeks since I... Is today Saturday? Yeah, it's been literally two weeks since I started training, which isn't very long. So, then I took a rest day. Um, did a 5k after that, took a rest day, did two back-to-back -back 5k's on the 7th and the 8th, and then took a rest day, then I think I did 10 5 5 consecutively, took another rest day, then since um, Wednesday, 10k, 10k, 5k, 5k. Now, the thing is, guys, you know, compared to where I was, you know, a few a couple months ago, my fitness is really bad um, in terms of running. Like, I used to be able to do a 10k in the space of 61 minutes with ease, to be honest, um, but... My 10k is now like an hour 15. I think it was anyway in the beginning. Um, I've got it down to an hour, an hour seven minutes now. But still, it's, it's, a, it's a long way to go from where I was before. And um, I'm not sure why it's taking so long. I mean, my, my legs have been in pain. And I've been seeing a physio for a couple of weeks now. He's been working mainly on my back because I've had like lingering back issues for a while now. And um, honestly, it's like he's, he's an amazing guy. His name is Dale. Um, he, he runs a sports clinic at um, Salford Uni. So if you guys want to go check him out, I can definitely get you in contact with him. He's he's top grade, man. He's he's an amazing guy. Like what chiropractors and sports massage therapists couldn't do over the space of many months or even years. You know, he's managed to fix something called a lateral shift in my back in the space of just a couple of weeks. It's crazy. Uh, his knowledge is really top notch. Um, so, so I've been seeing him for, for a few weeks now. And then um, when I went to see him on Wednesday, straight after a 10K where I did it in like an hour, 12 minutes, I think, um... I said to him, like, look, I've got this challenge coming up and um, do you, can you recommend me someone that can give me, like, a sports massage? Because my calves and my Achilles are really tight and um, there's, that's what's limiting me. Like, my breathing's fine, you know, my, my mentality is there as well, but my legs are just in pain for, like, many kilometres before they eventually get warmed up and then I can work through the knots. So then he was like, yeah, cool, no worries, and we work on you instead. You know, no need to refer you to anyone. So he went ahead and um, him and his um, student, you know, they worked on my, on my calves. And literally, like, I've never done this before. I've never done two back-to-back -back 10Ks in my life. Back-to-back -back 5Ks I might have done, but back-to-back -back 10Ks is unheard of for me. So then I went for a 10K the day after. And how is it that after a night of practically no sleep, I had a like, two-hour sleep that night, I just couldn't sleep for whatever reason. And having the massage the day before and the 10K the day before, that I'm able to go out 27 hours after my last 10K. 
And I did it in an hour, seven minutes. So I got a five minute improvement, which is huge. Um, it's mad. Like it can be only for one reason. That's because of the massage. So um, inshallah, I'm going to be seeing him again on Wednesday. And then also next Wednesday as well. Um, the week, sorry, the Wednesday after that, which is going to be like my sixth, after my sixth 10K or something. So yeah, man. Um, so what I've been doing is um, I don't like eating before my run. So I don't have breakfast. Um, usually I just wake up after about an hour or two. I'll go for my run. Um, I basically grab my, my squash. I take two of these electrolyte tablets. I take uh, a vitamin C. And I take some multivitamins as well. These are pretty cheap grade stuff that you just get from flipping Aldi or whatever it is. But there's still some good stuff in there. And then I make this beforehand as well. A little bit of a chocolate shake. It's about, with the 500 milliliters of milk, how many calories is it? Four, seven, five. Six six twenty five calories I think in this. So I down this afterwards. Then in about an hour after my shower and all that stuff, I probably eat some proper food. So this made some lovely chicken pulao today. So yeah, man, looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, man. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna take a four day rest now, and then I'm gonna do the ten k's starting from Thursday and I was originally going to start on a Wednesday but then I thought like why am I going to give my because I was thinking let me give myself a one day contingency because then I would have finished for the 30th but then I thought you know what that's just stupid man let's just take an extra rest day and then get on with it so yeah man um, I don't know man I feel like I'm going to get injured if I'm honest this is just a bit too extreme for me like I'm always trying to one up myself when it comes to a challenge you know we started with a half marathon, great. Then we start. Then we went to a ten k while fasting. That's good. Then we did a hundred k in one month. Okay, we're stepping up a bit, but notch while fasting again. And then um, this is the next challenge, isn't it? Like a hundred k in twenty days. Come on, man! It's like from doing it in a month to twenty days. It's, it's not a big deal, man. And um, I really need to always be challenging myself to do something a bit more crazy. The time doesn't matter to me. I don't care if I do it in sixty minutes, in in eighty minutes. Um, with, with regards to any any specific run it's just a case for me to get the 100 kilometers done in 10 days even if i have to skip hop crawl roll use a walking stick it doesn't really matter man it's just about getting it done inshallah i won't get injured like i think i've acclimatized decently well over the last two weeks from the training um, the four day rest will do me good. I might take a Epsom salt bath as well. I bought like three packets of those yesterday, man. They're so cheap, man. One pound for 400 grams, and it smells good as well. So, um, yeah, man, let's just see what happens. But with that said, man, just um, appreciate all your guys' support. Inshallah, just hoping that um, we can start this on Thursday and just get it done. And yeah, man, just uh, wish me luck. Please do support the hustle, the grind. And um, I'm pleased to see that I've inspired a few people as well to jump on board with this as well. And yeah, man, they're smashing it. I'm really proud of the team taking part, man. And uh, with that said, I think that's all I really wanted to cover. So it's a four-day rest now. Then starting on Thursday. And yeah, man, wish me luck. Say, guys, appreciate your.